Imagine, a podcast series by Imagine Theatre. Hello again, I'm Martin Ballard, welcoming you to episode 35 of this podcast series from one of the biggest producers of pantomime and children's theatre in the UK. For more information, go to their website at www.imaginetheatre.co.uk. As ever, I hope you've been listening to our previous episodes. A quick reminder that if you have missed any of my conversations with the creatives, actors, all those behind-the-scenes tours at Imagine Theatre, you can catch up with them at any time. They are all still available. And don't forget to subscribe to the series so that you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now, last time I was joined by the writer, director and academic Rob Marsden. In episode 35, I'm going to be giving you an insight into another area of the Imagine Theatre operation as the momentum of publicity builds for the 2022-23 Panto season. We're going to meet some more members of the Imagine team today talking about marketing and publicity with Laura Taylor, Katie Shilton and Becky Martin. But first, Managing Director Steve Bowden. Now, to start with, Steve, we have to say that as the company has grown and as you picked up more and more shows, marketing and publicity becomes an even bigger job, doesn't it? It does. It's a huge operation with so many shows to market. But what's been really fascinating is, of course, the way we market shows has changed dramatically, particularly in the last decade, the way that we focus particularly on digital and social media. Whereas when we started doing Panto many years ago, that was a word that was never never on the radar. I saw it's a massive job. It's a 12 months or more job, as we've said on every other programme producing panto takes a year or so but so does the marketing it does There's, you can't underestimate the value of getting a show on sale as the first panto opens you get the following years on sale because the audiences that go to panto love christmas and love to book the right seats with their family and their friends and it becomes part of their celebration so it's really important that we're there to let them get those seats as soon as possible i mean it's an old adage nobody will come if they don't know it's on but how important is publicity marketing and all that sort of stuff now in the 21st century so so important. There's such competition as well. People can watch shows on Netflix, they can go to the theatre, they can go to the cinema. So it's really important that you stand, get your head above the kind of parapet and stand there and tell people that you're on. With live theatre reopen and running at full pelt, it's, you know, there's plenty of opportunities for people to come back out and experience it. So the pantos need to be a real important part of the theatre's offering. Now, Laura, publicity and marketing means so many different things to so many different people. It's a massive area, isn't it? It's not just about putting an ad in a newspaper anymore, is it? It's huge, and it's often the department that people forget about when a, when a production is being pulled together. But, yeah, it's huge. I mean, you know, we put together really, really comprehensive marketing and PR campaigns for every show that we do. And as Steve has already mentioned, that's changed over the years, digital becoming a much larger part of that. But we have to make sure everything's covered from PR on radio, TV, print. We then print our own posters, leaflets, social media now, boosted posts with all of that, TV sometimes, radio ads. You know, we have to make sure that we're hitting all of those different mediums to make sure the message is out there loud and clear. Now we can talk about individual shows and how they're promoted, but obviously the brand, the Imagine Theatre brand, has to be promoted as well so that people know what you do and obviously that will bring in people to to work for you, uh, casting and so on. So the brand itself has to be marketed. Yes, it does. And also we like to kind of create a, a house style. So if somebody sees a piece of print or a bit of artwork, they know it's an imagined show because that's really important as well. So we gave our, our whole look a big overhaul a couple of years ago. We actually used that time during lockdown <laughs> when there was not much else going on we, because you don't all, always get the chance to, to look at things like that again. So uh, we had a whole refresh um, a couple of years ago and, and everything out there now looks really fantastic. And of course, we have to make sure that our own social media channels are out there, lots of content, our website constantly up to date. So we're marketing our shows as well as keeping our own marketing and PR going as well. And this is not just pantomime, obviously uh, children's shows throughout the year as well, so it's a, it's a full-time job anyway. It is, it, and it's really the marketing department who are always thinking further ahead than any other department. We have to kind of always look sort of 18 months ahead, so 
as one shows are opening, all the other departments are focusing on getting those shows up and running them. The marketing department are already thinking about next year and are already, you know, halfway down the line of getting print, titles, schedules, pricing signed off. It never ends. And they're kind of the unsung heroes in my mind because mm. they always get the blame if something doesn't sell very well. And if something does sell very well, they <laughs> never get the credit. So for all of you marketing and PR people out there, I hear you and I feel your pain. <laughs> I, it uh, comes up the image if you've been to the circus and you see uh, the clown or whoever who's you know spinning 300 plates at the same time it's a bit like that isn't it it is it is plate spinning that's a really good analogy and uh, we've got 17 shows this year so the way we're working it is kind of splitting those between our two marketing managers katie and emma they've kind of got their portfolio each and then myself and Sarah kind of oversee it. And then we've got Becky, our PR person who's with us today. She's overseeing the whole season as well. So it, it is juggling everything. And some venues need a bit more focus and you kind of have to turn your attentions to the ones that you feel need more focus at any one time. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. So, Becky, I mean, in terms of the individual shows, um, I mean, the marketing begins you know 12 months in advance because you may not know who's in it or you may not even have a cast or a, a script but you certainly will know the title so that's where it all starts isn't it yeah the kind of starting point with panto is announcing the title and obviously that does impact sales sometimes because sometimes it'll be everyone wants to see cinderella cinderella's on this year i want to go and see it but it i think as steve said it's important to get that on sale while you've still got a panto open mm -hmm. Because the people that have just been to see that show want to come straight out of a show and book for the next year. And you catch them while they're kind of excited and, and ready to book for the next year. So from a publicity perspective, that's the first point mm. is announcing the title for next year. Then you go a bit quiet for a bit. And I'm always chomping at the bit to go, come on, where's the casting? Where's the casting? Because that's the next bit of the... Um, of the puzzle if you like and normally that happens around Easter time or a little bit later and that's kind of where the excitement begins yeah. in terms of uh, what you can generate and what interest you have out there to talk to cast members and that's the really exciting bit for me kind of going who have I got to play with this year who can I um, put out there and and uh, and get talking about and then from there on, it's about kind of drip feeding, right? You've got to keep in the forefront of everyone's minds. You know, no one's thinking about Christmas and a heat wave as we are <laughs> at the moment. So you, you have to kind of keep it exciting and keep it relevant throughout the year because we're thinking panto all year round, but other people aren't. But there's lots of pantos to pick from out there. So you have to stay at the top of the agenda. You have to be at the forefront of people's minds. And that's what we're there to do. It's a really fun thing because you're working with sometimes some cast who are for the rest of the year before we get them working in other shows so it's liaising with them to find out what exciting things they've got coming up that we can piggyback off and then obviously from october onwards it's it's crazy crazy yeah. let's get on as many radio stations on as many tv <laughs> shows in as many papers as we can and this time of year we're here now in in july we're kind of halfway through getting all those assets ready for that so photos and video content and um, syndicated interviews so it, people will kind of think oh I saw that in the paper in November yeah. not thinking about the fact that we've been we were producing that content back in July when everyone else was sat on the beach or in the pub garden having a glass <laughs> nice glass of wine you know we're we're sat in a room with people wearing massive frocks and wigs yeah. um, <laughs> So I the don't panto, know who that could be. <laughs> me neither, Martin. But the Panto world is a very, very strange place when you work in it. And certainly for Panto PR, you do find yourself asking the strangest questions sometimes. Yeah. Just going back to, um, and bringing Katie here, because going back to once you know the title, you've got to have everything in place even then. So the artwork has to be ready. It will go in the programme for that Panto season, what the next year's Panto will be. You've got to be prepared. It's a lot of planning, isn't it? Yeah, as Laura says, yeah, we have to go on sale, you know, straight away and start getting all the assets out there and try to encourage people to book as early as they can. You know, um, things like school groups, they tend to try and book quite early. You have people who are always very keen to get the same seats. They love the front row so they can get picked on. So they like to, uh, <laughs> really? you know, they can get booked straight away. Yeah. <laughs> Today, for instance, we're here at the De Montfort in Leicester. We've just done a photo shoot. You know, as, as Becky was saying, once you know the cast, you've got something to work with and it's time to get excited and start that build up. 
you've been you've been running today i mean it's organized chaos isn't it you've got so much to cram into a day we do yes we cram a lot into one day we have to get all the content for the posters and we have to get um like steve said the um, social media is such an important part of the campaign now we have to get so many different images for that so many different videos um, so it's a very long day for everybody involved but it is a lot of fun um, I think all the cast you know they get to know each other prior to the panto starting mm. and um, that just helps to to sort of build up the rapport between them so that really tends to translate onto stage and um, it takes away those first day rehearsal nerves as well I think for a lot of the cast. Absolutely does and a lot of people may pick up a Demotfer or brochure for instance or um, you know whatever theatre they normally go to see panto they'll pick up a brochure and they'll see something in about the panto they have no idea how much planning and work goes into that Becky you know because that's done you know months in advance often isn't it? I think that's the beauty of it isn't it we we kind of know what goes on behind the scenes and um, we know the work that goes in but what should happen is someone should just see that come in and have an amazing experience Mm. and I think we just want people to kind of come along and enjoy it and yes it is it's it's a it's a year-long process that's why you have uh, companies like Imagine who do this as a as a business all year round but I think it is just about creating that magic from the start. You know, from the first time someone sees the title treatment, we want them to go, we want to come to see that. Yeah. We, want, we want to go there. And and just making sure that they follow that journey right through to sitting down in their seat and the curtains opening. Sarah's not here, Steve, but I have to say this is something that is a sizable part of the budget every year isn't it when you've got 17 shows that investment is really important it really is and you know there are so many places that you need to spend in creating print in design in the consultants who come and work with us to deliver so budgeting and budgeting in this particular marketplace is is tricky because costs have risen considerably just the cost of getting the companies together is expensive so it does take a sizable chunk of marketing budget on each panto but what's really good is that when you've got a number of shows there is an economy of scale and as Laura was saying we can put strategies together and house brands that mean that we can kind of do it in a more cost effective way and that's the same with every business you're looking for ways to to maximize the return on on what investment you have to make there are some pantos that will sell easier than others i think cinderella which is here is probably one of those that sells particularly well uh, compared to other titles perhaps but laura celebrity casting is one of the most important things not just for the show but in terms of the marketing isn't it Yeah, it is. Not for all shows. You know, imagine half of our shows don't have any profile casting in them, but they have kind of regulars. So we've Mm. kind of created our own panto stars in those shows. But for the the bigger, more commercial style, yes, the star casting is very important. And that always goes hand in hand with the title. In those venues, the audience are kind of used to seeing famous faces on the poster. So before they book their tickets, they'll go, who's in it? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the first question they ask. So for that reason, it's really, really important. So it's, um, you know, the word celebrity is changing. Mm. Uh, You know, when I was a child, we only had four TV channels. So the whole nation (laughs) were watching. Don't ask me how many were when I was a child. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There were bigger TV stars back then because the whole nation were watching the same people. Obviously, now there are so many outlets where you can see celebrities that the whole thing diluted Mm. so it's becoming harder and harder to cast them because you need to find those people that do draw in the crowds and there's a limited pool of people that can actually do it so we when we're trying to cast our shows we try to find people that that tick all of those boxes they drive the box office sales but actually can deliver the performance because that is equally as important and i think we've done really well this year mm. we've got some really good people in our, a- across in our the way. across the country as well across the uk so becky is presumably phoning you uh, on a weekly basis have you got cast yet have you got uh, what, what am i working with Oh, you wouldn't believe the amount of people that badger me for casting, Martin. Uh, I become the most wanted person. Uh, yeah, Becky's knocking my door saying, who have we got, who have we got? The venues are going, who have you got, who have you got? We need to announce in our brochure. So there's a hell of a lot of pressure on the casting department because once you've cast the people and they've signed the contract, that's not 
where it mm. ends you have to get those people in uh, for costumes and photo shoots and get that you know designed with the rest of the artwork on a brochure page or the post or however you're announcing them you have to get press releases written up get all of that proved by the artist and the agent so it's yeah it's a big kind of machine that's constantly working yeah but depending on the cast that you've got becky you can then work with that for instance aj and curtis you know you can do an awful lot of stuff with them you find characteristics or things that they're known for and then you can use that in a marketing way yeah absolutely i think as laura said it's about finding the right person for panto and i think you know there there's stunt casting if you like which does work and because people want to see a famous face but most of the people i speak to through imagine have a genuine love for panto you know it's not just about a contract that they've signed that they want to come and do because of that for financial purposes these people love what they do and you need that because the audience feeds off that you you can tell if someone's not enjoying themselves but yes once i get the cast through you know we've got such a variety of people we've got a, an influencer that's a radio presenter this year um Parle patel who is just so far removed from like an aj and curtis for example yeah. and there's so many different outlets to put these people out to get the word out about panto it's really exciting and when you've got this many shows to work with and this many casts to work with it's it's really fun and I was just saying earlier you look at the list of names we've got across the UK this year and it's stunning Mm. you know it's a really impressive list of names that will appeal to people across the UK Mm. and that's that's only kind of those named star casting on top of that we've got amazing performers that are brilliant at their trade some of the best names in the business which is absolutely a skill in itself Mm. And there's so many other things you can do with those guys as well, which is really fun, like a day in the life of a dame or doing it, you know, so much. Let's say a dame was an undertaker, for instance. I think that that might (coughs) that might happen occasionally. (coughs) Think of the fun you could have with that. Well, I've I've spent a lot of time with some of the cast over the last month or so. And one of the questions I ask is, do you do anything strange before you go on stage (laughs) and I've heard some of the funniest answers I think and I think it is our undertaker dame who curtsies to a picture of Princess Margaret every just before he goes on stage to bring out his um his pure dameness Ah. and these are people this is really a trade you know it's people that have mastered their craft for years and must curtsy to Princess Margaret before they um head off to do their slosh scene i might try that it might bring me luck who knows i think i need it after last year katie this is a full-time job all year round and you know the organization of that is is really important from the imagine end how do you juggle the 17 shows i think laura said you're splitting them between you and emma but how do you do that emma is new with us this year although she's um, got a lot of experience at other panto companies um and so she tends to have taken on some of our newer venues this year mm-hmm. um and then i've kept the ones where i've already got the existing relationships um so that's how we decided to split them this year just to keep on top of it we have regular meetings with the venues um that's one good thing i think in a way that came out of the pandemic is everyone's now just using microsoft teams and zoom mm-hmm. which makes you know keeping in touch with your venues a lot easier and it's nice to be able to see them face to face so you actually know what they look like <laughs> Uh, which is good when you turn up to a press night and you're looking around. <laughs> we haven't met you before on the podcast. How long have you been with Imagine now? Because you've got that relationship with the venues and that helps, doesn't it? I have been with Imagine now for 10 years. Mm. Um, yeah, this is my 10th year. I came to the company for two weeks' work. And so, yes, be warned, people. <laughs> yes, I'm still here 10 years later. But again, you obviously that relationship you have now with the venues is going to help in a marketing sense as well, isn't it? Yes, it does. I mean, you know, to have a good relationship with the venues is one of the key things. You know, you tend to learn so much about what they what they like what they don't like um, their time frames and everything like that but that being said you know things always adapt as well which is why you need to talk to them regularly okay so when we look at the year Laura and we're halfway through it now just map out you know how that will uh, work in a marketing sense between now and opening night okay so we're at the end of July now 
we're here in Leicester doing our publicity day to day, which is one of our last. So we've photographed most of our key cast members in costume. We've done lots of video footage. We've done press interviews and we've done most of that for most of our venues now. And we're just about to kind of go into the August time where venues are already saying to us, what title are we getting next year? I really need to talk to you about scheduling and pricing. And you go, God, we've got to do it all again. So we are motoring along with the 2022 shows always with half an eye on the 2023 yeah. shows so we'll be signing off on schedules and everything else soon and as becky said it's just about keeping the momentum going now so now we've captured all of the photographs and video content we now kind of plan that into a campaign and a timeline and make sure that it's drip fed out constantly so people just remember and are reminded that the pantomime's on and then from september onwards that's when the marketing and pr campaigns you know really really push forward and that's when people will start to see poster sites popping up and radio adverts and social media feeds just full of panto 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 um and then as this shows open we'll have artwork with titles and dates and schedules and pricing ready to go for next year's pantomime <laughs> um so as we've already said people can book for next year as they come out um and then we do it all again i start the casting process as soon as i've got casting done we do the photo shoots and the video shoots and it's just like this continue i feel like a little hamster on a wheel that never gets off of the <laughs> A very fun, and PR sparkly wheel. A very fun, very fun. Wheel. Is every venue different in terms of the marketing? Because I don't know whether you will go to one city where, you know, maybe the ads on the radio station don't work, so you might want more posters, or you may decide um, newspaper ads are pointless there because the circulation is low, so let's do some TV. Is, is that how it works? I think every venue, there's no one size fits all with a venue, which is, as Katie was saying, why it's so important to have those relationships with the venue because they're the best source of telling you what works um, in their area from a press point of view you have some areas where you know you've got really supportive regional press and a lot of regional press but as we know that's dwindling a little bit so there's challenges there about um, making that work so I think every venue is very different every plan you know it's not a one one size fits all every plan will be different some venues will need more some venues will, will need less TV might work in Leicester but won't work in Crewe and it's just about using the knowledge which is why if you're returning with a Panther company every year you start gaining that insight. I think these few years are going to be really interesting because we don't really know our audiences now and we don't really understand how it's all working now. This is our first year back to normal post-pandemic and we don't really know what that normal is. So at the moment there's a lot of learning about how we speak to our audiences, how we get people here, what press want to talk about. Um, so it's we're learning all the time and I think it's important to keep doing that and I think as Steve start, started off saying one of the challenges is that marketing and our approach to marketing and selling a show or publicising a show is changing you know at such a rapid speed with the advance of technology and all of the things that are out there that allow us to talk to people so it's an ever-moving game and ever ever changing goalposts so it is it's it's always challenging but a fun challenge and in terms of social media katie you've you've come up with uh, some interesting things for the cast to do the panto quizzes and so on they're great fun and and they're the ones that people will take notice of aren't they on social media yes they are yes we've had you do the panto quiz today yeah. which um, has definitely produced some um, really funny content <laughs> i think people are going to love and that's you don't always have to go with the hard sell you know, I think the um, people just like to see things like behind the scenes and funny little panto quizzes, mm. you know, and all that sort of stuff. And then we try and come up with lots of different artwork as well to go on social media throughout the year just to tie in with any events like Halloween, for example. Um, we're going to have the World Cup this year, so we've yeah. been taking some images for that. Although I probably shouldn't mention the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's constantly trying to come up with new ways to engage people's attention you know it doesn't necessarily 
automatically result in a sale, but it puts it in their mind and it sort of it's attractive to them. Just to sum it up, Steve, um, you've got to have a, a good team in place, haven't you? You've got an exceptional team here. Um, we've heard from some of them. We haven't heard from Emma, but, you know, they work like a finely tuned machine, don't they? They are, and they are all massively experienced and great people. And, you know, that's what I think makes any operation work is you get staff who you're incredibly proud of and who are brilliant at the top of their game. And we're so fortunate with the team that we have around us. And again, it's another great example of how far you've come since those early days that we remember well. I mean, could you ever have imagined, you know, having to worry about marketing 17 different pantos? No, and at times <laughs> I still think, how did this happen? But, you know, it did, and that's because I think we have a great team and people like working in that open and friendly and family-focused way that we, that we operate. Thank you, Steve. And also thanks to Laura Taylor, Katie Shilton and Becky Martin. I'm afraid we've run out of time again for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the series to catch up with any episodes you've missed so far and make sure you don't miss out in the future. You'll definitely want to listen to the next episode. Just imagine what it's like to be two of the most familiar faces from some of the most popular programmes on television, including Britain's Got Talent, Love Island, I'm a Celebrity and Strictly Come Dancing. They will star in Cinderella for Imagine at the De Montfort Hall in Leicester this Christmas. Next time, my guests are the popular dancing brothers from Stoke-on-Trent, AJ and Curtis Pritchard. Don't miss it and I'll see you then. Thank you for listening to the latest edition of Just Imagine, the podcast series from Imagine Theatre. And you can find out more by going to www.imagintheatre.co.uk. 